Hi, today I want to talk about omnidirectional speakers, uh, a topic which is uh, very rarely discussed, uh, why they are not uh, popular among audiophiles. Uh, the, uh, I was able to spot only nine uh, brands that make them and uh, the rest uh, estimated 10,000 uh, companies are making directional speakers. Uh, here are my speakers, they are semi or quasi uh, omnidirectional, the woofer faces uh, the ceiling and uh, a tweeter is a <coughs> planar driver uh, open to the back, uh, fires a, a little bit upwards uh, and uh, not to the sides but uh, uh, yeah, to the front, to the back, and to the ceiling, mm, <clears throat> and it's crossed at 2,500 hertz, but it can be crossed also at 1,000 hertz or 5,000 hertz with first order crossover. Uh, so it's a semi, uh, yeah, semi um, omnidirectional speakers. Uh, so why they are not popular? Um, I know of only uh, nine brands, and these are um, the first one is. Uh, MBL from uh, Germany, uh, they are, but they are pretty expensive, they require uh, big amplifiers, um, the best would be from their own amplifiers. Uh, the second one is Bangan Olufsen, uh, they make a Biolab uh, 90, which is their reference model, 140,000 euros uh, with uh, internal amplification. Uh, the other is Duevel from France, uh, from Germany, German Physics, uh, Zeta Zero from Poland, um, uh, Base Audio, both of these, Base Audio and Zeta Zero, are, um, uh, they have a ribbon uh, Twitter, uh, the rest uh, of the mo uh, brands, they do not use a ribbon. Um, another brand is um, Audience, this is a pretty new um, company. Mm, they have a full range of drivers to the front and to the back with passive radiators, very interesting uh, speaker. And what else? Uh, not much else. Um, oh, a definitive technology, but they have only <coughs> a, a woofer um, or a driver facing um, to the rear, uh, so it's not fully omnidirec omnidirectional. So that's it. Uh, ah, on, also Ohm from uh, Ohm Acoustics from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Um, they also make, uh, mm, and this company is from the early 70s. So Bang & Olufsen it was established uh, almost 100 years ago. Um, uh, MBL, it's from 1979. So these companies are rather, um, they make um, speakers for a long time. Um, okay, so why uh, they are not popular? I think that there are many reasons for this. First of all, um, is that uh, they are not th these companies are rather small. They do not ar advertise. They are not present on audio shows. Uh, okay, MBL is uh, is always there, but uh, but it's yeah very big, very expensive. Mm, and the other reason is that uh, perhaps uh, the rooms of many um, people, many clients are just not suitable for omnidirectional speakers. Mm, they require some space, um, but um, also the, the room has to have some curtains, carpets, uh, furniture. Uh, and if, if the room is not, uh, if the room reflects the sound, uh, it can sound a little bit bright. Mm, so maybe that's the reason. Uh, another thing, they are just expensive. Um, at least uh, only audience and mm, yeah, definitive technology is not that expensive. Audience and ohm. Uh, the rest, uh, the six other brands, are rather uh, yeah that they can be easily forty, fifty thousand euros or even yeah over one hundred. Mm. Uh, okay, another another thing is that uh, most of these are not super sensitive, so they have. Uh, uh, MBL is the worst, the, say the worst, <laughs> it's 82 dB, but uh, it works fine when the amplifier is powerful. Mm, and uh, only models that I know of that are above 90 are Zeta Zero and Bass. Um, well, that's it, maybe German Physics also, I don't remember. Um, so if somebody wants to use a, a low power a tube amplifiers, well, it can be done only with, let's say, three brands. That's it. Uh, the rest are not just not, just not. Uh, they, uh, you see, they don't use a very large drivers, um, and um, yeah, there is not much selection. 
so that's why I have done my own speakers uh, the woofer is 8 inch uh, so it, it is sensitive it is 90.5 uh, the tweeter is uh, 94 but uh, around 2000 to let's say 4000 Hertz it is only about 90 91 uh, but yeah above that it's 94 so that's pretty um, sensitive Mm, yeah, but but it's it's not measured in the um, in this configuration. Uh, so the woofer is not measured firing upwards. So in real, mm, let's say in my room, that will be less than ninety probably. Okay, but uh, still, um, I think they are very dyna dynamic. Mm, they work with this tube amplifier. Um, this is for the highs. Uh, this uh, hybrid amplifier and uh, class D. AIMA um, AO7 Max is powering the, the woofer and I have a DSP from Dayton here um, this this Sansui is just uh, it's not uh, connected um, uh, so yeah so so I made my own uh, quasi omnidirectional speakers Mm, and the ben I think the benefits of this dispersion are uh, just uh, stronger than uh, a little bit lower sensitivity. Uh, so it's a personal preference. If somebody wants uh, to have a very, very extremely dynamic sound uh, with um, low wattage um, um, amplifiers, then yeah, the horn speakers are the way to go. Mm. And uh, this is interesting that uh, despite the fact that horns are very big and very costly and they occupy a lot of space, still many more brands are making them uh, and uh, versus uh, omnidirectional speakers. Mm, this is interesting. Mm. <laughs> um, so let me know in the comments what do you think about this type of speaker? Mm. Have you heard them? Uh, what were your impressions? Uh, do you maybe want to own one uh, someday? Um, yeah, and I think the ohm, especially ohm speakers, are pretty affordable. That's around one thousand, two thousand uh, dollars. Mm, so you can have a taste uh, how they sound. Uh, another omnidirectional model is uh, from Linkwitz. Uh, Linkwitz, but it's uh, more like D DIY. Mm, you have to purchase a, a mm, like a. P P PVC uh, tube and, and then install the drivers and also have the active um, DSP um, and you can have uh, so for a relatively smaller budget you can have uh, omnidirectional speakers but they require um, a subwoofer because they are not uh, they go I think to 60 Hertz uh, using a closed cabinet so they, they require external subwoofers but still that's a very interesting model also so um yeah uh, this is all that i uh, had to say um, i think that uh, they uh, these uh, omnidirectional speakers require more uh, coverage more attention um, they should be uh, many more uh, producers should uh, make them um, and um yeah, but it is what it is. The market is what it is. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't really understand this, why this is the case uh, still, uh, despite all these reasons. I think uh, we should have more models in the region of, uh, let's say, three to three to ten thousand dollars. Many more companies should make them. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, these uh, speakers, they sound incredibly uh, good. Um, very dynamic, very open, very spacious. Uh, very natural uh, I don't have any any unnatural the, so the membrane is from pa from paper here from papyrus uh, the cabinet is from plywood uh, with slate panels inside uh, there is a natural wool uh, in, also inside and and some paper so it's a uh, it's dumped uh, inside and uh, mm, yeah uh, mm, I don't uh, honestly I, I don't see uh, so far um, any uh, specific weakness of the speaker um, maybe apart from the um, yeah the, the sound stage could be even larger but that's the the thing is with these amplifiers are cheap uh, and this is class D this is not tube bump so if I will replace this one with a tube bump 
Oh wow. Mm, yeah. Mm, so that's it for this video. Let me know what do you think about this uh, type of speakers. And see you in the next one.